Welcome to Crowd Surfing and Channel 17 at the Hostler's Model Railroad Train Festival 2020. I don't. I don't have a ticket. Where'd you pass at? I don't. I don't have. What do they mean? Pass? I. I don't, yeah. <laughs> How do I get a yellow pass? You have to get out of that booth down there. All right. Well, I'll That's go get one then. Yeah, All right. You have to have a pass. Let's go get a pass, Bill. folks, it's Farrell with Crowd Surfing down here at Union Station for the Hostler Model Railroad Show. I have my best friend Mike here with me. Mike, you're we'll, sure of that now? Well, one of us is. Okay, all right. Okay. Is there anything special I should go look at or see? Well, there's uh, the Lego layout, which is in the other room back there. You could go look at that. That's pretty neat. It always is. It attracts all the kids. Yeah. Uh, the Hostler layout right here, the O-Scale layout here. Uh, there's a lot of things to look at. Uh, the S-Scale guys are uh, down in the theater, and uh, there's the Garden Railroad up in the Old Timers room. There's two N-Scale layouts up there. There's a lot of stuff to go do that you guys would enjoy. Alrighty, can I get your name? Tom Rasband. And what is it that you're doing down here today? I'm what they call a, a door guard. What it is, is we, is on the door guard, we have people that come in with tickets. If they have the tickets, and they show it to us, and we let them in. If they don't have tickets, we send them around to the north door. We also have people that want to go upstairs, up to the uh, room upstairs with all the in-scale trains and the garden railroad. So I direct them which way they need to go and they go up there. Where are you going? Where are you putting me? Where... <laughs> Look at... <laughs> Do what you want to the girl. Leave me. That's how I live my life, too. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Carol. Hey. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Hi, Carol. How you been? What's, what's new? Um, just another year of painting, railroading, living, moving. Driving the train around? Driving the train around. You know, that joke never gets old to me. How hard is it to drive a train? You just sit there. How do you kind of get your name? Charlie Treft. And what is it that you're doing down here today? I am the announcer for the Hostler's Model Train Railroad Show. Oh, really? So over the PA, when you're telling people where they need to be and... I was going to say where they need to go, but that doesn't sound good at all, does it? No, do not. <laughs> <laughs> I just let everybody know what's here mm -hmm. and how great model railroading is. It really is. I have, do, you, do you have a model railroad at home? or? I have a couple of them. Oh, do you? Yeah, I got an HO's layout, and I have a N scale layout. Uh, and which one's your favorite? I don't have one. You don't, you don't have a favorite? <laughs> I love them both. <laughs> That's why I'm in model trains. Yeah, right? I love it. You ever anybody try to sneak in and not pay? I've had a couple. Oh, yeah? You rough them up, or what do you, you know, do? I just turn them around and head them back to the other way. Yeah, you're too nice. It's like rough them up or something. They'll think twice before they do it again. No, we don't do that here. <laughs> the Hostler Motor Railroad Club is a club that shows friendliness to people. Oh, well, yeah, that would, that would be the opposite of friendly. That is. Yeah. We can't have that at all. No, and the club, and the club security is, is pretty good about that as well. Very good. I, I heard your truck broke down. Why is everybody bringing that? No, it's not broke down. So how'd you get here today? I drove my truck. 
I would just have big tires put on it and a big motor and stuff put in it. It didn't break down. You just found some wire to repair it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know who told you my truck broke down, but they're they're bold faced liar. On the news. You know they do the traffic reports. Yeah. See me out there cussing it. Huh? <laughs> Instead of the train brought blocking the intersection, it's Farrell's truck. It's my truck. That's yeah. right. Farrell's truck's right there. <laughs> You know, I've made the payment on that thing I've religiously at least twice since I've had it in the last 10 years, and it breaks down on me. And so you think you pay and it should take care of itself, <laughs> You would <right>? think, right? <laughs> what is it that appeals to you so much about it? Memories. When I was three years old, my father got me a Lionel steam train, and I loved it. And then I still have the one he gave me for Christmas when I was five. Oh, really? Really. Did you ever bust it out and play with it? Uh, it just sits on the shelf looking nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get it ruined again. Yeah, it'll probably break or something, and you'll be SOL. Oh, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> How many of these shows have you been to? I'm part of the Hotscore Motor Railroad Club, and I've been to most... I've been here 10 years. Oh, really? You've been quite a few then. But I've also been to 10 before, or 5 before. Wow. So all kinds of... Model Railroad shows. I've been here. I've been coming here since 1998. Right on. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. Make sure you keep the riffraff out. Oh, I try. <laughs> so, you know about the coronavirus. It's on top of the news, right? Yeah, all the hysteria and hype. Okay, here's your chance to do a PSA. I cannot wait. You have the best <laughs> ideas. Uh, so, We've become more conscious about spreading germs, mm -hmm. right? And we're not supposed to shake hands or hug anymore. Oh, uh, well, okay, so. So, so what do you do when you, you, you know, normally, hey, Farrell, how are you doing? Uh, hey, we can't, we don't can't. touch your face either. And, and I didn't come up with this, but it's, it's all over. And so one thing is you foot tap. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, so, hey, okay. If you really like the guy uh -huh. or person, uh -huh. you know, it's two. So one, two. Oh, other, other foot. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. You get in this, Bill? You, maybe we have to back up. <laughs> okay. You know, I got all my other trains. I come to these shows all throughout the Salt Lake Valley, mm -hmm. and I pick up things that I like. I've been a member of this club since 2012. And to me, this is a great way to spend my free time. And anybody who says model, tra uh, model railroading is too expensive, can't get the room, they're wrong. There is ways to do this. All right, can I get your name? Richard. And Richard, what is it you got? Erector set. Erector set was the, uh, built by, well, or invented by A.C. Gilbert, mm -hmm. who also did the American Flyer trains. Oh, really? He had chemistry sets, microscope sets. What it was, he was a, an Olympian from the turn of the century, the last century. Uh -huh. And he was a psychiatrist, and what he wanted to do was do things that cause children to think. Now, really cool would be a soul, uh, soul tap, soul five, instead of a high five, soul five. But you gotta be good at this, so. Soul, soul five. Oh, someone broke something. Oh, yeah, I'll fall over. <laughs> that's a lot of work. Yes. I think it's easier to fist bump, isn't it? But that's your hand. Yeah, but it's still a lot of touching, technically. I mean, let's yeah, face it. Yeah, foot, you're, you're already on the... Oh, the yeah, ground. yeah. Hey, see? So, so, okay, I want you to practice. Okay, <laughs> so next time I see you, that's what we're going to do, right? Right. Okay, that's I've it. got a year to figure it out. <laughs> a well, year. That's if you survive the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, isn't that, is that ridiculous? Serious, is that ridiculous? Yeah, 20 bucks for a little bottle of... Uh, hand sanitizer. Let me tell you something. It's no secret that I'm an idiot, okay? And I'm not even worried about the career. Even I'm smart enough to know better than that. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? yeah. I don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I agree with you this time. <laughs> <laughs> about the coronavirus or being an idiot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've kind of worked with these guys who do the pizza box layouts. And that's something I sure like doing because you take a square foam of two feet by two feet, uh -huh. And you just put a circle around, and you can put hills and valleys and roads and towns on that little square, and a little N-scale train runs around it. Don't that ain't much room at all, a pizza box, huh? No. Two feet by two feet. That's four square feet. That's a good idea. Yes, it is. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. I'll let you get back to announcing, but I appreciate your time.
Thank you very much. This was built by a 12-year-old young man, 14-year-old girl, and a 12-year-old young man here. Mm. And what he would do is, in, in the designs, and I have the books here if you'd like to see them, mm. is he would show you, basically, here's what you need to do, here's the parts you need to have. Good luck. Figure it out, huh? Figure it out. And that's the word, is to figure it out. I am surprised at how many engineers, aircraft engineers, mechanical engineers, all those kind of guys that started with erector sets. Maybe you need to paint a corona, <laughs> coronavirus train, it'd be all the rage. Yeah, oh yeah, right. Put a mask on the front of it, and big no oh, touch yeah. sign. A mask, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. those don't help, but yeah, people are still buying them. Mask. <laughs> I'm not worried about the crime. <laughs> I've had a lot worse than the coronavirus. That ain't bothered me one little bit. <laughs> So what, so what else has been going on with you? Just walking around talking to people, yeah. you know? Yeah. We went... Oh. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say, you've been jumping on any trampolines with your shoes on lately? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, haunted house, tramps, haunted house, trampolines, trampolines at the farm, your and on. your shoes on. Oh, yeah, because I wasn't supposed to be jumping, huh? Yeah, yeah well... With your shoes on, I think the, serious trouble. Well, serious. I don't think the rules apply to me, and evidently they do. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, can I get your name? Thomas Hendricks. And what is it that you've got here? Uh, railroad diorama themes. Mm -hmm. And what they are is each one I make is a real location, real government agency, some of my own. And it's all fictional, of course. Mm -hmm. And I base that on uh, just my imagination. Mm -hmm. So this one is at Seagull Lily Ghost Town uh, using the old coal mine uh, spur. And in 1986, the Air Force left railroad cars, their satellite dishes, and there was a collapse of the mine. And now it's 2020, but what they forgot, there's extra terrestrial in the boxcar. <laughs> right that inside. alien in there. Yeah, they forgot about it. The Disney uh, Imagineers mm -hmm. erector sets, the great uh, uh, ride everybody loves soaring was designed by a guy who had an erector set. You know, I come to think of it, you don't see many erector sets in the stores anymore. No, they, you know, they're not very popular. Actually, they've stopped making them. Uh, you've got, um, uh, oh, uh, you know, the uh, Legos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's using Legos. But here, there's so much you can invent. The first all-nighter I had as a 10-year-old kid was building the robot. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, my mom came down and she says, what are you doing still up? And I said, well, I, I'm trying to figure out this robot because here's what I wanted to do and, and this is what it was. And that's what he wanted us to do. A.C. Gilbert wanted everybody to think, okay, how do you solve this problem? How do you come up with this challenge? Because if we tell them what to do, then there's no thinking. True. This teaches them how to solve problems. Everybody's bullying me all the time. I know, and you just were ignoring, ignoring, <laughs> ignoring. Well, I come from the school of thought if you ignore a problem long enough, it'll go away. <laughs> she didn't go away, though. <laughs> she made you take your shoes off. Oh, well. Holy yeah. socks and all. We went, yeah, <laughs> we went, <laughs> I hate holy socks with a passion. We went to a, a haunted house on Valentine's Day. Did you see that? No, I missed it. That was great. On Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. House. Yeah. And where was it? It was a Dead City Haunted House in Murray. The Fear of Love. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> if it was really a scary haunted house, it would have like a bride there or a preacher. You know what I mean? That would be terrifying for sure. <laughs> on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Very also, cool. Roman Legion came through because you're going to find Roman uh, artifacts uh, if you really look. Oh, yeah. That's nice. really detailed. And uh, I... Uh, North African Ibix that the Romans brought over that have bred and um, roaming around once in a while. And because of, it's a uranium mine, it's yours and mine, uranium mine, and it's been abandoned, but radiation persists. There's the spider. <laughs> and there's wow. some petroglyphs. And I had to be really detailed because when I saw that dish on the side, I had to scrape the side of the boxcar to make it look like it hit. And this, yeah. And there's a little animal over here. Lot, that's a lot of detail. It's kind of funny. You're building a robot in your bedroom and your mom's like, knock that off. That's going to ruin your brain. Go to bed. How people are with video games. That's going to ruin your brain. Go to bed. <laughs> no, no, actually it's, it's funny because when you look at what the kids are learning to do, because they solve problems mm -hmm. and that's what he wanted to do. He, he wanted, he, he built some games 
You know those little twisty tie games? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Puzzles. Now, now this is back. You look at how old these are. He started doing this in 1905, 1906, 1910, like that. You know, this kind of stuff. How did he solve it? And you listen to the people that talk about it and mm. all the different sets that were made. And, and yeah, it's to me, that's one of the reasons why we come and do this. Come and do these train shows is so that we can show people here's what's going on. Here's things they can do. Are they open year round? Is that their deal? No, they just did just did a special Valentine's Day. So it was that's that's why we went just because it was so something different, unique. We thought, well, we'll go wow. check it out. So, wow. so where's your partners in crime? Um, one of them skiing. Um, one of them had to work. You so. High straw, low straw. Yeah, well, I think they just make that. They're really like hanging out with me. <laughs> they they feel like they're my handler. You know, they got to keep Farrell, Come back. No, nope. come come back. <laughs> All right, take good. Take your shoes off. We're, yeah, yeah. we're happy to see you. I need somebody to help me take my shoes off on the trampoline. All righty, guys. Well, thank you so much for. Oh yeah. Oh wait, let's do this. Ready? You ready? 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 Oh, this way. Then this way. Yeah. See, I got it. That's too much work. See. All right. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone's coded, okay? This is a sample. My wife and I, the number of the diorama, when I, the month and year I finished, the name, authentication name, the authentication code to that relates oh, to it. even has a story that goes along yeah. with the diorama. And a disclaimer, because if it's classified, Hey, we don't want classified information getting out there. No way, that's all. <laughs> So, I do a disclaimer, it's all storyline, then under the Freedom of Information Act, you want the, the report from the agency, where you're going to get the report, the redacted report. Yeah, the redacted, of course, they got to be redacted. Okay, then underneath is the story for you to read, and I do my own classifications. That's really cool. Mega, hyper, I don't use actual classifications, but I yeah. do. And then tell the story, and it's declassified by me, declassified by owner if you own it, and the date that I, the date, and I mean, here's here's a typical example. Okay, here's here's a drawbridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, he shows you everything. He gives you a few little bit of indications. Okay, now build it. That was the, that was the instruction book. There's there's part of it. I can get you the instruction book out if you want. If that no, no, it. that's crazy though to think of because yeah, even. Yeah. Even I need stuff step by step. I just have yeah. a jumbled mess. I wouldn't have that. Well, see, he'd give you, he gives you signals here. Like, okay, here's here's some specific things. Now you start to look at, okay, yeah, you got the girders, you got all of the different the things. That's what's happened here. See, look, see how it's all bolted together. That's another thing too. You use like little screwdrivers and wrenches yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You got to use you got to use that, you know, to make it happen. All the little different things here that, that made this happen. You look at the gearing down here. See all of the gears that are here? You know, all the different things that, that make it go. So you would experiment with it as you would try to figure out what to do. All that fun, we forgot to ask you important questions. All right, Mark, so if someone's interested in your paintings, and why wouldn't they be? <laughs> where, where can they find you? You have a website, a Facebook? Website, artistoftherails.com, and uh, no Facebook, just artistoftherails.com. Get on that Facebook, that's the thing, that's what's I happening. Know. I should, I, and also we have, stay right here. I'm not gonna go anywhere. Oh, here we go. So. I belong, we have a group of railway artists in this country. It's American Society of Railway Artists. Please visit that site. You'll see a great variety, 30, 40 different artists from around the world. Very good. So there you go. All right, thank you. Thanks. Kissing on a heart. Look at where, where, where have you been, Smurfy? You have, you have I've been ticket. calling you, I've been texting you. Do you have a ticket? <laughs> no, I just kind of walked have, in with you. Do you have a badge? No, no, sir. Are you an exhibitor? I'm handsome. 
Well, that's really debatable, too. <laughs> Where I've you been... don't have any of the other app tests, so why yeah, would well, you be handsome? Uh, well, that's true. I'm short, I'm pudgy, and hideous. Well, I don't know. I think I think maybe we ought to call a 911 and no, have there's, come and there, throw you out. There's no reason to involve the police department in this. None. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I kind of got my doubts. I think we should. It goes on, and then my wife and I sign it. And then if you can find little figurines or whatever within the, the diorama itself, like the mileage or anything. That's, that's a really cool idea because you have the diorama to look at, but then it, it's also fun because you have a story to go along with it yeah. and paper. That's yeah. really, it's a great idea. And then how to change the battery on that one over there with the alien on it. <laughs> and you get it in a packet, so it's classified. And then before you open it, it says, once unsealed, you automatically have given your sworn solemn oath to secrecy and eyes only to be opened strictly by owner and seals to be strictly opened by owner under a strict penalty of prescribed law. It's all story. If you look here, see this? How it changes gears. So you can actually change speeds and directions. That's actually really ingenious. <laughs> well, the whole idea, the whole idea was so that, okay, what do you want to invent? What do you want to create? And when you think that this guy was thinking of this stuff back in the 10s, and 20s, and 30s, a lot of people don't know that the old milkshake machines were a, a combination of the motor. During World War II, A.C. Gilbert had to slow down because his motors were using to activate the flaps on the bombers for World oh, War really? II. Yeah. You know, I just thought about this just looking at these. I mean, these are 110 years old. 100. Those are, wow. And then you see the same thing with the trains. He calls it S gauge because it was scale. All of the locomotives and trains, if you were to exp expand them up, wow. are built to scale. scale. Yeah, everything. He was insistent on that. Very cool stuff. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. I think you've been ignoring me because I've called you like three times. How I've texted you, you 50. How did you figure that out? Well, because usually you're like excited to hear from me and you call me when I when I answer. You're like, Farrell, it's so good to hear from you. Holy smokes. Well, you know, I actually <laughs> would turn my phone off, but today I don't have to because I forgot to bring it. Oh, <laughs> man. So how, how's this year's, this year's show going so far? Well, to be truthful with you, I don't really know. <laughs> Uh, I haven't seen Ron, who's our ticket chairman, long enough today to talk to him to see how we did last night or how we're doing today. Each diorama has the furniture pads underneath, and plus you get the bucket, uh, the plastic bucket, so I can put it in on the foam and wheel it out to your car. Oh wow! And and all. Do you have do you have like a website or a no. Facebook page, nothing like that? You just got to come to the shows to get them. Yeah, this is my first show, and my wife's too. Super cool stuff. Well, hey, thank you so much. And I did oh. the canvas. There's the banana over there. Rails on canvas. And I outdid the guy that sold that $100,000 real banana. Yeah. I did mine on right here. <laughs> here it is. And there's the banana. Well, let's hope you, let's hope you outsell him, huh? I, I don't care about I outdid him. <laughs> All righty. Well, you have a good day. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Sorry, I was busy texting, and then Bill said, come talk to you. That's okay. Oh, look. See, Bill, we're interrupting, we're interrupting well, commerce here. What, what is it you're doing down here? Train show, supporting the Union Station and selling our shirts. So, Union Station, how much are the shirts? Depends on which oh, one. Oh, there's are. various prices, right? Yep. The ones we just sold them, kids can color. Wonderful. Wax paper, crayons, melts it on, seals really? it. Five bucks. Well, that's pretty good. I could, I usually, my kids are teenagers and they'll draw on their pants and stuff. I like them drawing on their clothes. Maybe I ought to get them a shirt and that way they can color crayon on it and be all right. I think that'd be great. <laughs> That'll be five bucks. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll have to go. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, for sure. All right, well, thanks so much for talking with me. You guys have a great day. Thank you. Last night, Friday night, the opening was really good. We had a big crowd at opening. Kind of died off a little bit. Then later on, it came back a little bit. It's been the same way today. I tell you, if, if the parking situation is any way, indication. You know, where's your mask? You probably got the coronavirus. See, here we go with that nonsense again. I got no coronavirus. What other viruses don't you have? Or do you have? Well, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if parking's any indication, you guys have a great show because it was a tough well, to find I, spot. That's always a problem here. Yeah, yeah, that's always a problem. 
parking is a big problem. But once you get parked and you get in here, it is worth it. How many how many exhibitors do you have? 43. 43 different ones, mm -hmm. okay? And there are eight or nine nine different clubs. Oh, really? Nine different clubs. Yeah, there's two clubs right here. There's three upstairs. Actually, there's another one over there. I forgot about them. So there's three here, three upstairs, and there's one down in the theater, and there's one out in the other room. All right, can I get your name? Mike Canelli. And Mike, what is it that you're doing down here today? Well, we're showing off these T-tracks. They're little modules that are only two feet wide uh -huh. and 14 inches deep. And you put them all together and make one great big layout. Yes, that's one of the benefits of end scale is that if you don't have room for a big layout in your house, mm -hmm. you make a module and then you get together with other like-minded people. Uh -huh. And in our case, it's the Ofer and Tintic and Western model railroaders. And uh, we set up like this and each one of these two foot sections is built by a different person. Oh, really? Yep. So I see, let's say you're like in the middle of building onto this one, right? Yes, the one here on the end. That or it's, it's a snow mountain. <laughs> I think he has plans to use another kind of color oh, on he, it. Are you going to change it up a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I don't know which color he's going to use. But, it's a great uh, ski resort, though. <laughs> yeah. As long as you can avoid the trains when they're coming through. Yeah, that's not, yeah, you don't want to do that. So, Janae, I see you're putting your balloon animal making skills to the test today. Yes. So I totally forgot I knew how to make balloons. <laughs> and the, the neighbor over here said, I know when you get bored you'll be making balloons. And I was like, oh yeah! So I went and bought some balloons. You totally forgot you know how to do it, huh? Mm -hmm. I, I forgot. Actually, I did forget how to do it. I had to watch YouTube when I got how? here. Yeah. This is a flower. And, hey, are, are, you, are you making balloon animals too? No. Or are you just eating suckers? Eating suckers. Where's the, where's the pump? I can't find the pink one. Where's the pump? Oh, here we go. can't find the pump for the balloon animals. We've been to this show six, seven times. And there's always something new and different here. And you would think, oh, there can't be something new and different. And I saw a guy that had a bunch of old director sets. I mean, how cool is that? There's always something new here. Yeah. Uh, I haven't noticed that. I didn't see them, but <laughs> I have to tell you this. Well, oh, you forgot your phone. Right. There was a guy come in a little while ago, and he had a big box in his hand. And he says, can I have a table to set up to sell this? <laughs> and I, and the box end of the box was open. Okay, so I'm so I'm looking at the box and I'm thinking, what is that sticking out? He had taken balsa wood and made a track, and he had Mountain Dew cans soldered together as a train, and he wanted to sell it. <laughs> you didn't let him in, huh? Uh, I said you have to buy a table. That's forty bucks. You have to buy a business license, and I said. Uh, I don't think you want to do that right now. So. Those pesky rules you got to follow, isn't it? That's why I don't follow the rules. I just do whatever I want. Well, I, I can tell that you don't. Look how far it's gotten me in life. No, oh, I can. I can just imagine you never follow the rules. No. Yeah. All righty. Well, you're a busy man out here, Radio Squawking. But yeah. thanks so much for talking with me. Farrell, thanks for allowing it's me back. A pleasure, really. <laughs> so, how long have you been into model railroads? Well, about 25 years, oh, really? I guess. And so what is it about the, the railroads you like so much? About railroads? About the model railroads. Oh, the model railroads. Well, it allows you to uh, run. I really enjoy driving the trains, uh -huh. being the engineer. It really never gets old to watch them and, and run them. And... Nope, it doesn't. That's mine coming along now with the old, older type. With the engine. red top. Yes. Very good. Very the good. Western Maryland, they're very colorful. They paint the tops of their cabs red. So is this the only scale that you that you do anything with? Is the end scales or do you do any other sizes? Right now I am starting to do an HO scale railroad in my basement in Bluffdale and all the neighbor kids are getting ready to come and drive trains. I bet. I, I might have to come down as well and hang out. <laughs> Alrighty, sir. Okay. Grown-ups are welcome too. Oh well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. You're welcome.
All right, Janae, well, you're super busy, and your assistant here seems to be uh, busy as well, so. Yeah, my assistant is really great. Her name's Zoe, did you ask her that? Yeah, well, I asked her if she was making balloon animals or enjoying that sucker, and she seemed to be more interested in the sucker, right? She's awesome. She's like, everybody, you want to talk to me like everybody else does. Zoe is awesome. <laughs> All righty, Janae. Well, thanks so much, and uh, good luck with your uh, balloon tying. Thanks for being awesome. <laughs> Look, I ran into Mr. Plowman down here at Union Station. Oh, Mr. Heavy on the Mr. Heavy on the Mr. That's right. Oh. I'm trying to learn manners. Well, it's hard for you, I know. It, it really is. Yeah. Alrighty, can I get your name? Rob. Rob, and what is it that you're doing down here today? Uh, we're showing off uh, Lego. We are a uh, Utah Lego users group. So do you guys, you guys have, and you know what, I think some of these are different than the ones you had last year, like this stuff over here I didn't see last year. And Yes, we, uh, we try to rebuild every year to show something different for the people. So do you guys have a, a, a website or something somebody can, like a Facebook page? Yeah, we or have anything? a Facebook page. Uh, it's uh, ULUG, it's just ULUG page um, right here on the shirt. So, how long does it take to set something like this up? I would imagine you're here for a better part of an hour. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, takes us about six hours to set it up. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, can I get your name? Ted Johnson. And Ted, what is it that you're doing down here today? Well, we're just running the train we're for the train show. We're actually letting the club run its trains here. These are actually a little bit bigger than the ones I've seen so far today. What size are these trains? These are old. old yeah. O and O two O and O twenty seven, yeah. These are over here in scale. O oh, scale. Yeah. O scale? No. O scale. O scale. So there's a difference. So this is this is older older school. And this is newer school. Do they this is new school. Is it I've only seen like the H O and the N scale trains for sale. I've never seen any of these. Yeah, 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 but I've never seen the big ones before. Right. And upstairs we have G scale. Uh -huh. That's huge. Yeah, because I, I was thinking like these old trains are like from the 50s or something instead of instead of modern day, right? Well, the stuff to hear is from the 50s would be like this stuff right in here, and this other stuff is more modern. So, what are you doing down here? Well, you know, we're just trying to sell some T-shirts, raise some money, get some money for to help restore this uh, beautiful building. Mm -hmm. So, what exactly? I don't know if I asked you this before or not, but what exactly is the Union Station Foundation? So the Union Station Foundation is a 501c3 foundation that um, was started in the mid-80s, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by, by concerned citizens, um, many, many Browning family descendants and stuff, mm -hmm. who wanted to make sure that this building stayed and didn't get, didn't get torn down. And now we're in the process of really starting to, to really raise a whole bunch of money to help you know, restore this building. And we have a gala actually on May 21st in this room in the grand lobby. And the murals that you see on both sides, both walls of the building mm -hmm. are, are the focus of that gala to help restore and preserve those Edward Lanning murals. You ever drop anything in it break and you've got to put Absolutely. it all back together again? Absolutely. I bet that makes you happy. Oh, fun. Yeah, it's fun times. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't use any glue, no glue. Yeah. No, no glue on us at all, huh? Four letter word. Huh. I just glued all together because I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to figure out how it went back together. Well, then it couldn't be anything different next year. You guys don't take these apart. Oh, we do. No. After about a year of showing, most people will show for a year, and then disassemble and rebuild. Holy smokes! I'm just saying stuff like this. I don't imagine there's a Lego manual anywhere, so you're going to nope. be a minute trying to figure out how you want to do it. Right. Absolutely. It's all. It's all in our head. Most of it. Most of what you see is probably about 90. To 95 percent custom here so yeah no manuals so you can still buy these bigger ones if you want to then oh, shoot you yeah. sure. <laughs> sure enough huh oh yeah some of these things years ago you could go get one for 50 60 bucks you can go as high as a couple of thousand bucks with some of these engines that are here well you really love your train you're spending that huh <laughs> You have to pinch pennies for a little while then you yeah. can do this thing. Yeah. yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. But then once you got it, you got hours and hours and hours of playtime. That's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> There's some of us who collect a lot of it and never get a chance to run it. Oh. As a, with me. Yeah, right. Whole room full of train notes, never run them. You're going, you have what you have, what they call get around to it. Oh, yeah, You're yeah. going to build a layout when you get around to Eventually, it. So I, yeah. I'm working on it now. <laughs> 
Well, I, I wish you luck in that. And I see you guys tell me, you only been trying to do this for 15 years. When are you going to finally get it done? I'll give it another 15 and we'll, hey, we'll get started. Don't tell them. <laughs> All righty, sir. Well, thank you so much okay. for talking to me. I appreciate it. Okay. Do you have any idea when those were painted? Um, I think, I want to say the 70s. I can't remember exactly, late 70s, early 80s. But Edward Lanning is a, a world-renowned um, mural painter, uh, mural, mural artist. Um, it's got several in Ellis Island. So, oh, wow. and this, this, my understanding is these are some of the last ones that he did. So we want to make sure we preserve them and restore them. And pretty, pretty important then. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, put them in this great building. Right. Yeah, that that would be a shame if they demolish this building. Could you imagine that? Would be horrible. Yeah, it'd be terrible. And and we're we're you know we're helping raise money. We're helping the city with that and with the whole downtown economic development plan. And as part of that, you know, 12, 15 year plan, but. You know, we want to make sure that in the next five to seven years, a lot of stuff gets done here. All righty, Mike. Well, you're, you're busy, so I appreciate you talking. Appreciate it, Harold. Take care. Very cool stuff. Well, if nothing else, it draws a lot of children. Yes, it does. I think it's a fan favorite. So, <laughs> I, 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 the, the plexiglass walls are getting a little bit higher each year, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we did do that. <laughs> I can't say that I blame you. I mean, especially for a, a kid, that's not hard to reach in and want to touch that. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the old days, we had ropes, and so they would just shoot right under the rope, and yeah. they want to play with it. Yeah, and I understand. Exactly. Too. Yeah, right. But it's our toys, <laughs> yeah. so you're going to touch them. Yeah, it's a lot of money invested in toys. <laughs> yeah, I bet. All righty. Well, thank you so much Absolutely. for talking to me. I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Can I get your name? Jim Gregory. And somebody told me that today is your birthday. Uh, tomorrow is. Tomorrow. But, yeah. Well, yeah, close enough, They're and you'll close. be you'll be 27, I'm guessing. 28. 28. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a good deal, right? That's right. Yeah. So, seeing how it seems how tomorrow's your birthday, I think these people should buy you anything you want here. I do too. I agree with you. Yeah. Yep. That would be nice of them, wouldn't it? I would think that would be the right thing to do. <laughs> Don't you? I, no, I totally agree. Yeah. So whatever he wants is on you two, right? Yeah. Oh, they just said yeah. See, you're in good shape. I heard that. I'm in good shape then. <laughs> yeah. So what is it about the, the, the model trains you like so much? Uh, I've just collected them over the years quite a bit. So, yeah. So do you have a layout or do you just like to collect them? Yep, I have a layout. Yep. And what's your favorite scale? O-gauge. The bigger ones yeah. in. Yep. Very good. All righty. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Happy birthday. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. All righty. So, hey. That's it for me at the Hosser Model Railroad Show. Make sure you come and check this show out. It's so awesome. Every single year, there's always something new. And uh, I managed to sneak into the Lego land, so I'm going to play with the big Lego ship. Hey! Thank you.